Hi, I'm Kristen Goodwin. On this episode of the Fox News Rundown, President Trump has been back at the White House all week after spending last weekend hospitalized for the coronavirus. But is his diagnosis hurting his campaign? Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace weighs in on the president's recovery, the vice presidential debate, and looks ahead to next week's Supreme Court confirmation hearings. And while we are 25 days out from the election, over 5 million Americans have already cast their ballots. Fox News senior correspondent Eric Sean shares his insight on mail-in voting and the legal battles over it. Plus commentary by senior pastor of First Baptist Dallas Church and Fox News contributor Robert Jeffress. The Fox News Rundown is a daily news podcast where we take a deeper look at the stories important to you. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast player by going to foxnewspodcast.com. I'm Janice Dean. I'm David Asman. I'm Dana Perino, and this is the Fox News Rundown. Friday, October 9th, 2020. I'm Chris Foster. Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace says President Trump and others at the White House being infected with coronavirus could affect the election. Right now, uh, the coronavirus and COVID and the president's handling of it is the top issue again and looks like it's going to be all the way from now till the election. I'm Dave Anthony. Millions of Americans have already made up their minds and didn't wait till November to vote. We don't have just election day, it's election month. With early voting and with COVID-19, there have been lots of lawsuits and court cases that have uh, moved early voting even back earlier to give more time, uh, to give people more time to vote. And I'm Robert Jeffress. I've got the final word on the Fox News Rundown. President Trump's been back at the White House all week after his hospital stay with coronavirus. No campaign rallies, though, and no public appearances except on social media and TV. Telling Fox Business Network. I think I'm better to a point that I feel better than I did, uh, you know, I jokingly said 20 years ago. I feel perfect. There's nothing wrong. But he's been losing out on in-person campaign time, three and a half weeks from Election Day. The president predicts if he loses... Look, I stood next to Joe and I looked at Joe. Joe's not lasting two months as president. Okay, that's my opinion. But Joe Biden's had a consistent lead in national polls and looks good in some battleground states President Trump won in 2016, with those polls moving even more his way over the last two weeks. He leads the president by more than four points on average in Florida now, nearly seven points in Pennsylvania, even taking slim leads in Georgia, Iowa, and Ohio. Biden saying earlier this week during a speech in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I will govern as an American president. I'll work with Democrats and Republicans. I'll work as hard for those who don't support me as those who do. That's the job of a president. The latest Fox News poll has him leading President Trump by 10 points nationally. That's up five from last month. You know, I think the president had a really tough week last week um, by an overwhelming uh, majority in, in the polls. The president lost the first debate. Chris Wallace is the host of Fox News Sunday, the moderator of the first Trump-Biden debate. Then uh, he catches uh, the coronavirus. Uh, not only that, but there's this, this hot spot, this outbreak in and around the White House. Now three dozen people, 36 people uh, in the president's broader circle have the coronavirus, which just raises all kinds of questions, renews questions about how, how he has dealt with it. President Trump says he feels good. Um, do you think that his quick recovery could help him politically? I think, uh, I don't know. I don't think he gets points for recovering. I'm very happy it, it, that he seems to be recovering and doing so well. We want our president to be healthy. We want our first lady to be healthy. But, you know, to the degree that there have been a, a series of issues in this campaign that, you know, have risen to the top. It was the coronavirus, then it was uh, race and racial justice, then it was uh, law and order, then it was the Supreme Court. You know, right now, uh, the coronavirus and COVID and the president's handling of it is the top issue again and looks like it's going to be all the way from now till the election. And according to all the polls, by a fairly sizable majority, uh, people think that the president it doesn't handle it as well as Joe Biden. So, you know, whether he, I mean, assuming he recovers, 
I, I, you know, I think this is still a political negative for him, and particularly given the fact that it's not just him uh, who's sick or the first lady who's sick, but that there really has been this this breakout in in the White House where we're now talking about three dozen people. Well, and it gets people talking about coronavirus, which isn't what the Trump administration, the Trump campaign wanted to talk about. Now, uh, any impressions from the vice presidential debate? It was certainly more rote than the one you uh, moderated with the president and, and Joe Biden, other than the fly on the vice president's head for a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, it, it certainly was more of a debate. They they talked over uh, over their time limits, which is fairly mild. That's a you know, that's a drop it ticket compared to the <laughs> car crash that I oversaw. Um, so I, you know, I thought it was better. The other thing that I, I guess was frustrating was the fact that Susan Page had some very good questions that she asked, and then they would completely ignore them and go off and answer something else. Vice President Pence, have you had a conversation or reached an agreement with President Trump about safeguards or procedures when it comes to the issue of presidential disability? And if not, do you think you should? You have two minutes without interruption. Well, Susan, uh, thank you. Although I would like to go back. I, I think to, we need uh, to move on. Well, to the thank issue you. But I would like to go back presidency. because the reality is that we're going to have a vaccine, Senator, in record time, in unheard of time, in less than a year. Joe and I are very clear. The American people are voting right now, and it should be their decision. They'd like to know if you and Joe Biden are going to pack the Supreme Court if you don't get your way in this nomination. Let's talk about packing. You once Come again on. gave a non-answer. Joe Biden gave a non-answer. <laughs> trying to answer you the now. American people deserve a straight answer. And yeah, let's you. talk about packing the court then. Let's talk about the Please, pack. I just want the record to reflect she never answered the question. You know, as a moderator, and I certainly was getting hit last week, Susan's getting criticized this week, you, 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 in the end, you can't make them. You don't have a, you know, you don't have a subpoena. You don't have a, a, a billy club. They, in the end, you have to depend on the good faith of the, the participants in the debate that they're going to play by the rules. That when you ask a question, they're going to answer the question. Um, and and if they're, you know, duty, if they're uh, just determined not to answer the questions or play by the rules, there's there's a limit to what you can do about it. The Amy Coney Barrett uh, Supreme Court confirmations hearing starts next week. No reason to believe she won't be confirmed later this month. I guess the process, just speaking politically, might be a, a reminder of the importance of voting. Yeah, I, and, and, you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I, if, if you Again, if you believe the polls, most people think that the winner of the election and the, the winner of the Senate uh, after the election, which party holds the Senate, that they should determine who uh, is on the court. Um, and and uh, when you look at the issues, whether it's Roe v. Wade or whether it's Obamacare, people don't want to see either of those overturned. So on those issues, uh, it, it, it seems to favor the Democrats. On the other hand, if you know the the court and 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 who's you know who's who who is being appointed as judges and let alone as justices to the Supreme Court is so important is such an article of faith to. Republicans and conservatives that I think that if the president had said, you know what, we're just going to wait for the election and the, or, or Mitch McConnell had said, you know what, we're going to wait till after the election to vote on this nomination. It would have been such a, an extreme turnoff to uh, to the Republican base that they really had no political choice. Uh, the, you know, I think they, they if they didn't do it, they would have paid a terrible price, even if on the specific issue, uh, the majority of the country doesn't favor them. Right. Uh, Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace. Chris, thanks again. You bet. Thank you. This is Robert Jeffress with your Fox News commentary. Coming up. The election may be more than three weeks away, but a lot of people are not waiting. We obviously are going to see more mail voting than we have in the past. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a Republican. Fortunately, in Florida, we're allowed to process the ballots as they come in once the window starts. But there's controversy. The state's online voter registration system crashed before Monday's deadline. Now, they did let some register after, but there is now a court case to try to extend it, and there are many more court cases. 
Close to 300 lawsuits have been filed nationwide over all sorts of things, from the ballots to who's eligible to get one in the mail to when they have to be returned. And more than 6 million people have already voted, either by mail or at a polling station open early. Four years ago, there were only about 75,000 votes cast by this time. We don't have just Election Day. It's Election Month. Eric Sean is a Fox senior correspondent and weekend anchor on the Fox News Channel. With early voting and with COVID-19, there have been lots of lawsuits and court cases that have uh, moved early voting even back earlier to give more time, uh, to give people more time to vote and send in their absentee ballot if they need be. Yeah, and th- I mean, there are so many different issues being litigated with the ballots themselves and also with the counting of the ballots. Now, there are a lot of states where they can't even count until Election Day. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Under state law, uh, 15 states, just 15, allow mail-in ballots to be counted before Election Day. And those deadlines range from one day before Election Day to like two weeks uh, or before. A couple of states allow counting when they receive the ballots, but they are not allowed to release the results until polls close on Election Day. So just think about it. That means you have 35 states that are, are, are compiling and are getting all this mail and all these votes, and they got to put them in the uh, behind lock and key in the cage and just wait until Election Day before they start counting. And that's why, you know, many say, and I think we could go days in November before we know who exactly who won because all the votes won't be in. Uh, so what are we going to watch on election night? I mean, we're so used to, you know, all of a I sudden it's, it's 8 o'clock Eastern time and we're calling this state and this state and this state. Well, I think they would be able to call some states. I think they'll be able to call a lot of states, uh, those that uh, already have mail-in ballots in already. Uh, so I think you will see uh, a great number of states called that night. But I, I bet a dozen plus may not be called because they're going to have to wait until all the absentee ballots and all the mail-in ballots are returned. And you've got a, a delays because of these court cases that stretch on. Michigan, for example, uh, has been given 14 days after Election Day. That's two weeks after Election Day to, uh, to, to consider those ballots to be counted. Ballots have to be postmarked by Election Day. But, you're, you know, I just got something in the mail that was, today that was mailed uh, two and a half weeks ago, just a regular letter. Right, um, right. So there could be these delays, and we, you know, it could stretch for a while. We may be waiting for a couple of big states, you know, a week or e- even a week longer. But I think we'll get a sense on election night of where it's going. But if it's a lot of smaller states with fewer electoral votes and, the, and many big states with big chunks of electoral votes, then, you know, we're, get ready to take naps and sleep, and it's going to be a while, Dave. There's a lot of different lawsuits in different states. Like I know in New Jersey, they were trying to also stop a mail-in ballot program, right? I mean, mean, you can go across the country with this kind of stuff. In New Jersey, uh, the law has been uh, that you cannot count the votes until Election Day. Well, the state legislature legislature went in and they changed uh, the law and uh, to say that the state officials can start counting ballots uh, 10 days before the election and that they can count ballots that are received two days after the election, even ballots that don't have a postmark. This is all new in New Jersey. Well, the Trump campaign opposed the plan. They uh, went into court saying they should keep what they've had always, which is start counting Election Day, count only ballots that arrive by Election Day with a postmark uh, of Election Day. Well, that's changed. Uh, A federal judge found in favor of the state and uh, allowing them to start early. And you're seeing these type of cases spread out throughout the country in a, vari- in a variety of ways. In South Carolina, it was the opposite that happened. They have for years have a witness requirement that if you have an absentee ballot, you need to get a witness, someone else to sign the back of the ballot to say, yes, you are who you are. This is a real person. They've had that as state law in 1953. State changed it. Republicans objected, went to the Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Republican challenge, uh, which is the way the state had been doing it in the past. Now, President Trump has been claiming over and over 
The election could be rigged with widespread fraud. They're cheating all over the place on the ballot, so how is that not a problem? He told Fox Business on Thursday. It's a corrupt system. Because they're sending out millions of ballots. Now, when you send out millions of ballots, when you're the sender, you can send them wherever you want. The president singled out Nevada, and he's talked about California before, run by Democratic governors. And he told Maria Bartiromo two mailmen have been indicted, and... They found trays of ballots in in the river. They found uh, eight ballots with my name on, military ballots, eight ballots with my name on it in a waste paper basket. His Democratic challenger, Joe Biden, said after their first debate... He didn't think this was going to be... If he lost, it wasn't, wouldn't be a legitimate election. Already began to plant in seeds of doubt in the legitimacy of this election. I don't know any president's ever done that before. Now, Eric Sean has been following this closely, and he's covered past elections. What does he think? Well, he's trying to do this for political reasons. The president, David, is full of it. Uh, in terms of widespread fraud. There is no widespread fraud. The election is not rigged. You frankly cannot rig and tilt and tip and steal a presidential election. The reason for that is there are 50 different uh, states, 50 different election secretary of states and and officials that handle the election, and there are 3,000 counties. You have thousands of separate election districts in order to do this. Has there been fraud? Yes. Is there fraud? Yes. Uh, this, are there mistakes that happen? Yes. You just mentioned California. They are sending out what's called universal mail, uh, and that is mailing a ballot to every registered voter. The Democratic argument is that's fine because voters, by registering, are saying, are saying we're ready to vote and you can get a, a ballot. They're mailed out 21 million. They are mailing 21 million of these ballots this week. They did have a problem, 2,000 voters in uh, Woodland Hills. They, they got their ballots, and guess what? The, the presidential race was left off. So critics will say, look, is, there's a problem. But the reality is that that was found, and it's being fixed, and it's being uh, c- corrected. The reality is whether the ballots are mailed out to everybody, even if you don't ask, or only to the absentee ballots, the way the president votes and what he says is acceptable, that you want a ballot, the reality is both ballots have to go through this system in the same manner. You need to have uh, the election officials will be checking the personal information, the social security numbers, they'll being uh, they'll do a security matching. So there are the same security standards of any absentee ballot. They will go through that whether or not it is a ballot received from universal mail or a ballot received uh, by asking for it. Is it possible and is it is, it, is there a potential that a group or someone uh, can, like, grab ballots out of a mailbox and just vote them? Yes, there is. Uh, is there a possibility that a group or a bunch of people can grab ballots from mailboxes and vote enough to tip a whole state in terms of uh, the election victor? Uh, that is extremely, extremely doubtful. It has been done in yeah. the past. The president does talk about ballot harvesting, as you've called it. And I know that Republican critics have said, look, there are people who've moved and and there are people who don't live at the address anymore and didn't tell anybody. And then uh, ballots are going to go there and they'll have extra ballots. Well, that's part of what should be the election security from the Help America Vote Act, which is it is up to the uh, uh, state election officials to know if that person is no longer in residence at the House. Uh, under the uh, HAVA Act, they, they send out, if you don't vote, they send, send a postcard. And if you don't vote in two separate elections, they drop you from the rolls. Now, people get all upset over that, but that's a security measure to make sure that people are who they, who they say they are. Ballot harvesting, uh, there have been several cases involved that. Those cases basically don't involve trying to steal an election or stuff a ballot box. They basically deal with the number of ballots that someone can hold. Uh, Some states say the limit is three. Uh, In the past, there's been a limit of 10. But the states have, have, have kept a trying to keep a tight number on the number of ballots that someone can collect. California has one of the worst problems uh, um, uh, uh, of ballot harvesters. You're not supposed to get paid for doing that and this sort of thing. Is there potential for fraud? Is there room and error? Yes, but to the president's argument that there are gonna be, uh, you know, millions of stolen, faked ballots uh, to steal the election, 
you know, that is quite a uh, quite a, a, a bolder and, and challenge and responsibility for someone or some group to try to pull off. One of the things also that is being discussed is with all of these lawsuits, they may not be resolved at all, even close to being resolved by Election Day. So what does that do? Well, that's true. I, I, I think what if you don't have there have to be standardized election rules that the voters should know about in each state or in each jurisdiction. But there are always, always, Dave, is a fallback, and that's called a provisional ballot. That's called going before before a judge. It is cumbersome. It, it can be difficult, uh, but it's up to the judicial process to sort uh, all this out. I have to admit, with all these stories, and you've covered a lot of them, and with all of these issues and legal issues, it is a little head spinning, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. It really is. It's uh, and I would be it's head exploding. I mean, every we're getting five or six court decisions across the country every day. There are issues being raised here, you know, every single day. And and you have to remember, and it's actually a blessing. People say, well, the Russians could steal the election or some group could try to steal the election. Thankfully, unlike other countries, we do not have a federal, nationwide, centralized election system. That's a blessing uh, of what the founding fathers uh, in their foresight uh, created. Thank goodness there are thousands of separate election jurisdictions. That will give us dozens and dozens and dozens of court cases. Some of those cases will likely be conflicting, and they already are conflicting no, no matter where you are, and each rule is different in each state and each, each uh, many times, even in the same state, because the, election, the local elections are run by the county board. Counties have different rules and regulations. That, though, has turned out to be a blessing to uh, try and prevent the type of uh, widespread fraud and uh, malfeasance that the president has been alleging. Well, as the president likes to say, we'll see what happens. Eric, Sean, (laughs) thank you so much for joining us. All right, Dave. Thank you. From the Fox News Podcasts Network, in these ever-changing times, you can rely on Fox News for hourly updates for the very latest news and information on your time. Listen and download now at foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Subscribe to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. And now, some good news with Tanya J. Powers. Food Network star and restaurateur Guy Fieri is giving back to the men and women fighting the California wildfires. The mayor of Flavortown brought food to more than 2,700 firefighters from the Sonoma Lake Napa unit of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection last weekend, according to the unit's Twitter account. The Santa Rosa Press Democrat reports he served up a salad medley with penne pasta, meatballs, and garlic bread for the firefighters, and even got a crew of chefs and friends to prepare the food next to the the fire camp at the Sonoma County Fairground. Cal Fire's Napa unit tweeted their thanks with a post reading, a million thanks to Guy and his talented team for bringing his delicious delights to the Glass Fire Base Camp. He made a lot of people very happy and full today. It's not the first time Guy has stepped up to feed Californians affected by wildfires. He did the same thing for responders and evacuees of the Santa Rosa fires in 2017 and both the car and camp fires in 2018. He also organized his fellow Food Network chefs to thank 3,000 of the police officers, firefighters, EMT workers, and doctors who responded in the wake of the 2017 shooting in Las Vegas. Tanya J. Powers, Fox News. It's time for your Fox News commentary. Robert Jeffress. What's on your mind? President Donald Trump has nominated appellate judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court of the United States. Over the next several weeks, every single aspect of Judge Barrett's life, including her faith, will be questioned ruthlessly and skeptically by Congress, the media, and the general public. Barrett has been through this before. During Judge Barrett's confirmation hearing for her seat on the Seventh Circuit in 2017, Senator Dianne Feinstein tried to raise doubts about whether Barrett's Catholicism would be a hindrance to her service in the nation's federal court system. Feinstein said ominously, the dogma lives loudly within you. 
Of course, what a liberal like Feinstein meant as a damning accusation was actually what any committed Christian would count as the highest compliment. The question has never been about whether Judge Barrett was qualified professionally to serve on the court. She clearly is. Instead, Judge Barrett represents a threat because her conservative Catholicism is embodied in her whole life, and it dissents strongly from the progressive religion of secularism. The dogma lives loudly within her because it's undeniable to outsiders that her life is reflective of her faith. We've come to a strange place in America when genuine Christianity is a liability instead of an asset for public office. The moral teachings of Christianity about life, marriage, and gender are something that, until very recently, characterized the broad consensus of the American public. The real problem is that historic Christian claims fly in the face of the new secular orthodoxy which has been imposed by our nation's courts for over 50 years. Of course, facing skepticism because of Christian faith isn't too surprising. Jesus told us it would happen. In John chapter 15, Jesus predicted, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Every person who truly follows Christ will, at some time or another, be hated by the world. When we walk by faith, we will inevitably become out of step with the culture around us. But we can take heart, even amidst skepticism and persecution. Christ is not calling us to go where he hasn't already gone himself. So let's all let the dogma live loudly within us. This is Robert Jeffress. You've been listening to the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Stay up to date by subscribing to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. And for up-to-the-minute news, go to foxnews.com. It's the Perino and Steyerwalt I'll Tell You What podcast. Dana Perino of The Five and Fox News political editor Chris Steyerwalt dissect the ins and outs of national politics. Subscribe and listen now by going to foxnewspodcasts.com. Love Fox News? Click the subscribe button to get more of the news and opinion you trust. And click the Fox News Rundown playlist for the latest episodes.